William Brandon Lacey Campos William Brandon Lacey Campos, August 31, 1977, November 9, 2012, was an American poet, writer, blogger, columnist, LGBT, and HIV-AIDS activist. Early Life Campos was born on August 31, 1977, in Duluth, Minnesota, to Deborah Carey Watt and William Edward Lacey. His great-great-uncle was the black historian Dr. Carter G. Woodson, the second black man to be awarded a doctorate from Harvard University and the founder of Black History Month. He attended schools in Minneapolis and graduated from the Patrick Henry High School in 1995, where he was a member of the Student Council. He continued his education at the Warren Wilson College in Swannanoa Valley, North Carolina, the Universidad de Puerto Rico, Rio Piedras, and the University of Minnesota, where he received a bachelor's degree in political science. Advocacy Career Campos became co-chair of the National Queer Student Coalition as a teenager. His career included work at the Center for Media Justice in Oakland, where he was also the founding chair term of office from February 2003 to December 31, 2004, of the Lavender Greens, the Green Party LGBT Identity Caucus. Campos was a regular presenter and participant at the National LGBTQ Task Force's annual Creating Change Conference. He co-chaired the United States Student Association's Queer Student Coalition. He was also a graduate of the Task Force Youth Leadership Training Institute in 1999. In his final years, Campos would become the co-executive director of Queers for Economic Justice, where he worked on LGBT issues of social justice in New York City. He was a board member of the Otter Lord Project. He was also involved in supporting the Hetrick Martin Institute. He also joined Voltage. Calm, a dating site aimed at eliminating stigma and providing support to the HIV-positive community as a support model and spokesman. HIV positive since his mid minus 20s. He spoke extensively about his Sura status, his experience and reflection as a man of color, but also on his recovery from addiction to crystal meth. He described himself as a poet, playwright, journalist, amateur chef, and life commentator, doing his bit to put his foot in the asses of the regressive masses, while putting filling and nutritious food on plates of folks that ain't got much and deserve better. Campos died on November 9, 2012, in New York. Publications, blogs, writings, 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 writings. Campos was the author of the blog My Feet Only Walk Forward. He was co-contributor to the Huffington Post discussing black masculinity image, perception, and stigma. He also contributed a regular column in the body entitled Queer, Paws and Colored. In 2009, My Latino Voice, Com named him the number two queer Latino blogger to watch. In 2006, the Star Tribune named him a young policy wonk for his political shenanigans. A poet, he was the author of the volume of Poetry It Ain't Truth If It Doesn't Hurt with illustrations by David Birub from his Face a Day collection. The volume was published in July 2011. He created the Alfred C. Carey Prize in Spoken Word Poetry in honor of his grandfather. He published poetry in Ganymed Literary Journal in 2008. He contributed to the anthology From Macho to Mariposa, New Gay Latino Fiction, published in March 2011. He wrote about being the only non-PhD candidate to have written a chapter in an edited collection called Queer Twin Cities, Twin Cities GLBT Oral History Project. He contributed to the poetry collection Mariposas, a modern anthology of queer Latino poetry, published in October 2008. He was a contributor to Beyond Resistance, Youth Activism and Community Change, New Democratic Possibilities for Practice and Policy for America's Youth, published in March 2006. Political and Social Engagement in a speech in November 2012 at Tufts University, he tackled a recurrent theme in his life, his status as a multiracial man. I am standing in front of you a black, white, Ojibwe, 
Afro-Boricua, HIV-positive queer man, he said, and I am just as black as any of you. No more high yellow and midnight blue conversations when talking about skin unless it's to talk about how that high yellow or midnight blue person rocked your socks last night after that party, and you are about to take his or her last name. I could give a damn about the style you wear your hair, fried dyed and laid to the side, or afrotastic. I am with Miss Indy. Harry, I am not my hair. In a speech in 2012 at the Civil Liberties and Public Policy Conference at Hampshire College, he called for HIV to be a central concern of the movement for reproductive freedom. HIV isn't over. It's relevant to your work. It's relevant to your lives. It is not just a disease that affects white gay men. It isn't a disease that impacts only men of color on the down low. In fact, it isn't a disease that impacts only men. Women, and specifically women of color, and even more specifically African American and Latina women, are the fastest growing population of people living with HIV. And with 300,000 women living with HIV in the United States and women representing more than 50% of HIV cases around the world, you cannot in justice or in faith remove issues of HIV from reproductive justice.